Hi friends, I am Srishti Jain and today we are going to do 5 questions of finance. Today we are going to discuss some important terms related to finance. Then the consumer confidence survey which is conducted by RBI. Next we will move forward to FRBM Act and some concepts related to the financial system of the economy. I hope that you like my video. Do subscribe to our channel for more regular updates. Now, starting with the first question for today. It says that Mr. A works in an MNC. He owes money to Mr. B and is unable to repay back the loan. In such a case, what can Mr. B do to recover his amount? Choose from the below options. So, four terminologies have been given to you and to answer this question, it is really important to understand these terms. So let's move on to the next slide to understand this. First is letter of credit. So what is the mechanism of letter of credit? Suppose you are a buyer of some goods and you have taken it on credit from a seller. But then you are unable to pay to the seller. So bank is there which guarantees to the seller that he will receive his payments on time. So as you can see, letter from a bank guaranteeing that a buyer's payment to a seller will be received on time and for the correct amount. Then we have the garnishy order. Now what does this mean? If there is a debtor and a creditor. Now this Mr. A who is the debtor, he is unable to pay back the loan he has taken from B who is the creditor over here. Now, the creditor may go to a court and that court can order the MNC or the office in which A is working to seize the payments or the salary or the wages of A and give it to creditor B till the time the debt is satisfied. So here this office or MNC is the garnishy. Then we have bill of lading. Now bill of lading is a legal document which is issued by the carrier to a shipper that details the type, quantity and destination of the goods being carried. So it tells the detail of the goods being carried. Then we have OTS or we say the one-time settlement. So it is an agreement wherein the defaulting borrower agrees to pay part of the dues in order stop banks from taking legal action against them. So this is usually in case of banks. So OTS is usually done when the borrower cannot repay the loan to the bank and the interest accrued has surpassed the principal amount. Now what is the benefit to the borrower in one time settlement? That he is reprieved of all the legal proceedings that might have been initiated against him. But it severely affects the retail borrower's credit score. So as you can see the letter of credit is between the buyer and the seller of a good. The garnishy order is between a debtor and a creditor wherein the debtor is unable to pay the loan he has taken from the creditor and a garnishy order has been issued by the court to the office. Then we have the bill of lading which is out of the context that have been asked in the question. Then we have OTS that is usually in case of banks when an individual or a borrower has taken a loan from the bank. Now let's move back to the question to see what the answer can be. Now here Mr. A was the debtor and Mr. B is the creditor and the debtor is unable to pay the debt to Mr. B. So Mr. B can go for the garnishy order so that the MNC of Mr. A can pay to Mr. B until the debt is satisfied. Letter of credit as I have already told you is between the buyer and seller of the goods. Bill of lading is related to the carrier and the details of the goods being carried. Then one time settlement is where a person has taken a loan from the bank. So our answer is option B. Now let's move on to the next question for today. The question says that consumer confidence survey is conducted by RBI in major cities of India over 5000 respondents. The survey measures consumer perception on five economic variables. So you have to choose the incorrect variable from the following variables. So first let's discuss that what CCI is in the next slide. Then we will move back to this slide to answer it. Now this consumer confidence index is based on the premise that if consumers are optimistic, they 
tend to purchase more goods and services which should inevitably stimulate the whole economy so based on the optimism and the pessimism this index is formed now this consumer confidence survey is conducted by rbi in major cities of india over 5000 respondents and this survey measures the consumer perception for the current as well as the future on five economic variables and these are the five economic variables based on which this index is created in september 2019 This index witnessed a six-year low in September 2019. The current situation index reached to 89.4, and this is the lowest the index has ever reached in the Modi governance. So, when the index is below 100, it is said that the consumer confidence is in the zone of pessimism. and if it is above 100 then in the zone of optimism now what current situation index is so it measures a change in consumer perception over an economic issue in the last one year and future expectation index is for one year ahead while serving on the same variables that we have discussed here so this is basically the current perception and this is the future perception that is the one year ahead expectation of a consumer now moving back to the question to answer it so the correct answer is education because economic situation price level employment income and spending are the economic variables based on which consumer confidence survey is conducted now moving on to the next question for today now with reference to the fiscal responsibility and budget management act that is the fbrm act consider the following statements and choose the correct ones so the first statement says that fbrm act strengthens the financial discipline and fiscal prudence next is that the committee under the chairmanship of nk singh was set up to review the fbrm act third is fbrm bill was introduced in the parliament of india in the year 2000 by atal bihari vajpay government so let me first disclose the answer and then we'll have some discussion on fbrm act in the next slide so the correct answer is all of the above that is all the three statements are correct with respect to the fbrm act now let's have some discussion on this so this fiscal responsibility and budget management bill was introduced in the parliament of india in the year 2000 by atal bihari vajpayee government for providing a legal backing to the fiscal discipline to be institutionalized in the country and fbrm act was enacted in 2003 so it is an act of the parliament that sets targets for the government of india to establish fiscal discipline improve the management of public funds and strengthen the fiscal prudence and reduce its fiscal deficits so this act basically sets the target for the fiscal deficit of a country now i think that you all must be knowing that what fiscal deficit means it is a difference between the total revenue and total expenditure of the government and it is termed as the fiscal deficit so it is an indication of the total borrowings needed by the government in other words this deficit is financed through borrowing from either the central bank of the country or raising money from capital markets by issuing different instruments like treasury bills and bonds now in the year 2016 nk singh committee was set up by the government to review the fbrm act now let's have some discussion on the recommendations of this committee now the task was to review the performance of the frbm act that is the fiscal responsibility and budget management act and suggest necessary changes to the provisions of the act so the recommendations of the committee said that the government must target a fiscal deficit of 3% of the gdp in years up to march 31st 2020 subsequently it should be cut to 2.8% of the gdp in 2020 and 21 and 2.5% by the year 2023 so these were the recommendations of the committee so after having a brief discussion on what frbm act is let's move to the next question for today So this question says that the financial system of any country is an important tool for economic development of the country. 
In the light of the above statement, choose the correct statement with respect to financial system from the following options. So the first statement says that financial system helps in creation of wealth by linking savings with the investments. Financial system drives savers and borrowers by bringing them together. And lastly, that financial system includes financial institutions and financial services. So the answer to this question is all of the above. That is D, that all the statements are correct. Now, having some discussion on the financial system of our country in the next slide. Now, the financial system helps to bring together the savers and the borrowers. People who forego their present consumption and save in the banks, banks can mobilize these savings to the borrowers who need them for investment purposes. And this is where the banks, a part of the financial system of our country, is working. So basically, it is linking the savings and the investments of the country by bringing together the savers and the borrowers. So this financial system helps in the economic development of our country also because it encourages both the savings and the investment and it creates a link between the savers and the borrowers or the investors and also facilitate the expansion of financial markets and help in financial deepening and broadening. Now let's have a discussion on the components of financial system. First is the financial institutions which includes banking institutions, non-banking institutions and further classification maybe of commercial, cooperative, regional rural banks or the foreign banks. Then we have the financial markets. We all know it is the unorganized and the organized markets. Now if you watch my video regularly then I want to ask you all that what is the term used for such a economy where unorganized and the organized markets are present? So I'll be looking forward to your answers in the comment section below. Then we have the financial instruments or the assets. And lastly, we have the financial services like the fund based service or the fee based service. So this financial system is really important for any country because they work together to promote growth and avoid runaway price inflation. And if a country has a lack of a strong or sound financial system, that generally works against the national economy. Now, after discussing the financial system, let's move on to the next question for today. So, a financial institution is a company engaged in the business of dealing with financial and monetary transactions, such as deposits, loans, investments and currency exchange. Which among the following are deposit taking institutions? Now see insurance companies take the premium from the insured. Retail banks as we all know like the commercial banks, they accept the deposits so too. Pension funds, they do not accept the deposits because they are the investment pools that pay for employee retirement commitments. And funds are paid for by either the employees, employers or both. Then we have mutual funds. It is also a professionally managed investment fund that pools money from various investors to purchase the securities. So when funds come from many investors, there is a pool of investment and then the mutual funds invest this in a pool of securities. Then we have building societies. So what building societies are? It is a financial institution owned by its members as a mutual organization. And it offers banking and related financial services, especially savings and mortgage lending. So it accepts the deposits as well. So you must be thinking then what is the difference between the retail banks and the building societies? So see banks are companies usually listed on stock market and hence they are owned by and run to the benefit of its shareholders. While in the case of building societies, they have no external shareholders. Mortgage borrowers, savers, current account holders, they are the members who vote on decisions that affect the society. Then we have regional rural banks. So RRBs provide loan and other financial assistance to entrepreneurs in village, suburban areas and small towns. So they become able to enlarge their business. So they also accept the deposits. So our answer is 
2, 5 and 6 that is option D. So with this we have completed 5 questions of finance for today. I hope that you like the session. Do subscribe to our channel for more regular updates. Thank you for watching the video.